half with pride and half with fear. I just wanted a safer place to hide. I don't want to be safe tonight. I need you like a hurricane, thunder crashing, wind and rain. Tear my walls down. I'm only yours now. I need you like a burning flame, a wildfire untamed. Burn these walls down. I'm only yours now. I am yours and you are mine. Destruction's all I need, and I'll receive the Lord from thee. Yes, I'll receive the Lord from thee. I need you like a hurricane, thunder crashing, wind and rain, tear my walls down. I'm only yours now. I need you like a burning flame, a wildfire untamed. Burn these walls down. I'm only yours now. It's your eye in the storm, watching over me. Storm warning, only good for me, and you are the war. Let me be your casualty till I am yours alone. I am only yours. I am yours alone, O oh Lord. I need you like a hurricane. Thunder crashing, wind and rain, tear my walls down. I'm only yours now. I need you like a burning flame, a wildfire untamed. Burn these walls down. I'm only yours now. Come on, church, give the Lord a hand tonight, if you will. Give Sister Beth, Brother Daniel, and the Lord a hand tonight. How many is glad to be in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. I want to take one minute and say I'm glad to have Brother Ricky's mom. I acknowledged everybody a while ago, and I slipped by and forgot you, sis, and I apologize about that. Amen. Good to have you with us tonight. How many knows that the Word of God is powerful than a two-edged sword? How many knows that God's Word is a sure foundation? How many knows that when God speaks, you don't have to send back and guess what's going to happen because His Word is going to do what it's sent to do? The Bible said that, that He sent His Word, and it would accomplish that that God sent it to do. I'm here to tell you tonight, it doesn't matter what the situation looks like, and doesn't matter what people have said about it, and doesn't matter what people have even prognosticated over but when God has spoken, there is nothing the devil can do but fall in line with the Word of God. I want you to turn with me tonight, if you will, to the book of Zechariah. As I was standing in here, and God, about two years ago, began to speak to me in Sister Tammy's heart one night, just before Brother Mike Mitchell from Montgomery, Alabama, was getting ready to minister to start allowing our ministers on Thursday night to minister. And several times over the last several weeks while I'm standing there just listening to them as they're using their talent and their ability for the kingdom of God, God speaks to me. You know what? If you want to hear from the Lord, sometimes you just got to stand still and know that He's God. 
Sometimes we've always got the remote on that we're trying to talk to God and God just wants us to get lost in His presence. And while we're in His presence, in the fullness of God, He'll speak to our spirit. He'll talk to us. I remember this year before we got to Dalton, Georgia, that Sunday morning God spoke to me and said, I'm going to release prophetic. I didn't understand the full what He was going to do even as he unfolded it that morning and prophecy was being revealed and, and manifested right in the middle of the service and the word of God coming forth. God was fulfilling prophecy. God's not looking about, about the past. He's looking to, to bring you to the next level of the kingdom of God. And he's looking to get some people that are, 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 are spiritual minded enough to, 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 to look forward and the things that when he hung on the cross wasn't about him he would have died if you were the only one in this building that he wanted to be saved but he looked at the world he was looking at the soldier that nailed him he was looking at Pilate that said I wash my hands I have no, nothing to do with this man but yet he went in, insane because of knowing what he had involved to cause him the Christ to be crucified Tonight, as we look at the Word of God in Zechariah 3, 1 and 10, we want to start there. And he shewed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. Writing of Zechariah, and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. Brother Daniel, will you help me out, brother? Come over here on the other side over here, if you will. Well, he says the right hand. Come over here on my right side. Over here, brother Daniel, on the right side. He can get that thing over his head enough where he can see. Be the left to them, but my right up here. So I have to turn around. And the Lord said unto Satan, The Lord rebuke thee, O Satan. Even the Lord that has chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. It is not this a brand plucked out of the fire. Let's go ahead and read, and I'm going to come back and preach off of that scripture. And Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Honey, when you're going through a trial and you're, you're going through the fire sometime, it, it gets a hold of you. It burns you. And he stood before the angel, and he answered and spoke unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filth, the garment from him. This is what God said to you. I'm getting ready to change the garment of the church. <laughs> oh, I know some of you have come through the fire. And I know some of you have had Satan. Come on up here on the platform, brother. I know how to kick you off. <laughs> Amen. He's preaching to to, to this pre preacher of God. He's preaching to Zerubbabel. He's preaching to, that he shows him his standing at the right hand and he's resisting whatever he's doing for God, whatever he's been commissioned by God to do. And in the midst of this, he's been like a brand that's in the fire. And I don't know if anybody's been in the fire lately, but I can believe there's a few people in here that have been in the fire because Satan has resisted you. He has stood against you. He has tried to stop you. He has tried to do everything to devastate you. But nevertheless, you are a brand plucked out of the fire. You are a chosen vessel unto God. You are anointed by a king of kings and a lord of lords. You are his vessel and not this world. Hallelujah. Joshua clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. And he said, spoke unto him that stood before him, said, Take away from him the filthy garments. And unto him, behold, I have caused iniquity to pass before thee, but I will clothe thee with a change of garment. I'm here to talk to you tonight. I'm trying to read on down through here before I start preaching. Because I'm about to come unglued. And it said, let there be a fair marrow point. It says, so the fire marrow was ahead and clothed him with garment. And the angel stood by him. And the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua. Seeing, thus saith the Lord of hosts. Hang on with me. I'm gonna, I got to go back and preach a little bit. I won't read, but I got to preach First scripture, Zechariah 3 and 10, Satan stood to resist. How many of you, get behind me here, brother. How many of you felt him breathing over your shoulder lately? 
How many of you lately felt that you had something for the Lord to do, but you could feel something resisting you, trying to hold your hand, trying to hold your testimony, trying to hold your praise, trying to keep you back from doing the will of God? This is... Zerubbabel that he's talking about. This is the man of God that Zechariah's prophesied because he's got a call of God on his life. He's got a purpose, Brother Ricky Gilbert, to do something for the kingdom of God. He's got a destination that's waiting in front of him, but there's a Satan standing that is doing everything that he can to resist and cause even carrying the torch to resist it from going into the, the supernatural things of God. God began to speak to me Thursday night and said, prophesy to the church. So throughout this message, I will be giving you not only word, but some prophecy that God is saying to this church and to you that are sitting here tonight that you are a brand that's plucked out of the fire. You're chosen by the Lord. You're called by His name. You have His credentials in your life. You may have Satan resisting you, but there is an anointing upon you that is going to allow you to fulfill and do everything that you've been called to do in the kingdom of God. And the Lord said to Satan, rebuke thee, for it is not this a brand plucked out of the fire, Brother Robert. A brand plucked out of the fire. I'm talking to some people here tonight that knows how it is to be in the fire. They know how it is to be under pressure. They know how it is to have Satan to resist them. They know how it is that every time they make three steps forward, Sister Wendy, they know how it is to get four steps not back. They know how it is that, that when they begin to sing, Sister Carol, or they begin to prophesy, or they begin to do the work of God, how it is to have Satan come in, so purely, somehow or another, coming against them to resist them and causing them seem like not to be able to get anywhere in what they're doing for the kingdom of God. They're a brand plucked out of the fire because they are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a peculiar people that is going to show forth the praises of God. But he didn't say that Satan wouldn't show up. He didn't say that Satan wouldn't resist them, trying everything they could to stop them. Jerubah was sent. Zechariah is prophesying to the men of God. He's sent with a mission to reveal the altar, to lay the foundation, to get the house of God in order that the rest of us can build on to the coming of Jesus Christ. Zerubbabel was sent there. Satan is sent to resist him. Have you tried to do anything for God lately and felt resistance? Have you got up and preached and felt like you just messed up big time? How you've tried to testify and felt like I should have kept my mouth shut? Have you tried to sing a song and after you sat down from singing the song, you should have said worse to God that I hadn't opened my mouth to start out with? Why? Because Satan was there to resist you. He was there even tonight while these young people were standing up here trying to lead us in some praise and worship. Satan was standing in the background, spiritually speaking, resisting what they were trying to do in the spirit. He was trying to frustrate the choir leader. He was trying to frustrate the youth. He was trying to get things out of order because his job was to come to do everything that he could to hinder. That's his job. His job is to come to frustrate you, to discourage you. And God spoke to him and said, I rebuke you because I have chosen Jerusalem. I have chosen the church. I have chosen you as a brand that's plucked out of the fire. And he said, as I have chosen you, so shall I also clothe you. I'm here to tell you there's some things going on right now. You may be in the fire. 
But there's a change getting ready to take place, Sister Tammy, in the church. We're getting ready to change some garments that we got on tonight. Our garments may have been burned and our garments may have smelled like smoke and we may have came through and our filth of our flesh may have fallen in the trial that we went through. We may have stumbled along the way, but the Lord is speaking unto Zechariah, said prophesy, angel of the Lord, tell him, I see your garments, I see you standing before me, but I'm getting ready to give you a change of raiment. Hallelujah. Sister Elsie, in the past we've, we've come before God and we've, we've been in the fire. And that's what Zerubbabel is doing. He was sent, Sister Tammy, with a purpose to rebuild and lay the foundation. There's some of you tonight under the sound of my voice, you are here not by accident, but by design, plan of God tonight to be in this church. You're not here a whoops baby. You're not a coincidence. But you have a destination of God to do something in the kingdom of God that will cause the devil to fear and tremble for you to walk in what you are called to walk in. Stood before him. He said, take away the filth. Let's back up to how Satan stands to frustrate you. Have you ever been there, Brother Ricky? And you felt, oh, slew foot breathing. You're pushing with everything you got. And you feel like it's not enough. You're doing everything you know, Sister Wendy. And the devil's saying, it's not enough. Trying all the time to tear you down. And all the time, you may not realize it. And you may not even know it, but you're a brand. You're chosen by God carrying the torch ministry. You're not a whoops baby. You're not something that wasn't ordained by God. You're something that God thought about before I ever came to this city. For years before I ever came to pastor in this church, I lived here. Went to another city and preached in another town. God spoke to me and as I was praying for this city. God said, go and start a work there. And all the time that as we have been ordained by God, we can feel the breathing of Lucifer down our neck. We can feel when our youth choir begins to sing and gets in the anointing, him trying to mess with them. We can even see sometimes when the sanctuary singers are trying to bring the glory in, we can see Satan try to rise up and bring division among them and hinder them and frustrate them. Why? Because they're a brand plucked out of the fire. Because they are chosen to do a work for God. Because they are ordained to have a calling and anointing of God on their life. And this is what Zechariah is prophesying to Zerubbabel. He's saying, Joshua, Joshua clothed with the garment, stood before me and he said, Clothe you, take away the filthy garment which is before him. And unto him I have caused iniquity to pass from thee and I will cause thee to have a change of raiment. I'm here to tell you as he began to speak unto Joshua. He said, I'm going to take away your garment. I'm here to tell you tonight, some of you have come through the fire. Some of you have come through things that nobody else could have walked through. Some of you have walked through things that you thought you were losing your mind because Satan was resisting you doing everything he could to get you to give up tonight, to get you to not walk back in the church. He was doing everything he could, Sister Sheila, amen, to your family, to cause them to throw their hands in the air and say, enough is enough. I can't go on. Just like he told Joshua. Just like he told the man of God. Just like we read through all through the passages from Zerubbabel, Ezra, Nehemiah, now Joshua. He's prophesying. He said, I'm going to tell you, you're a brand plucked out of the fire. You've been in a fire, but I'm going to bring you out of this thing. You've gone through some hard times. You've gone through times that you about lost your mind. You've gone through times that you just thought, I just can't go to church anymore. You've gone through some times that you just said, God, I give up. And the Lord said, oh, carry the torch. 
you're a brand that's been plucked out of the far. And as I have plucked you out of the far, I'm getting ready to change your garments. I'm getting ready to take the filthy garments of yourself off of you, and I'm getting ready to clothe you in a new garment tonight. I'm here to tell the church tonight that God is getting ready to change your garments tonight. He has seen your affliction, Sister Brandy. He has seen your tears in the nighttime when nobody was there but the Lord Himself. As you go on into the third and the fourth and the fifth chapter, you'll see that Zechariah is prophesying about heaven, basically. He sees the seven eyes of God, which are the seven spirits of God, which is the fullness of God. And then he goes on to tell that there's two that are standing beside of God. Two angels of the Lord that are standing beside God. And God saying, Joshua, I've caused Satan to resist you. I've caused him to fight against you. But I'm going out of this thing. I'm going to change your garments. I'm going to change your situation. I'm going to change your struggle. I'm going to change your mind frame. I'm going to change everything that you've gone through because I'm getting ready to put a brand new heart in you. I'm getting ready to take you in places as we go to the seventh verse. He said, and the angel of the Lord protested unto Joshua said, and thus saith the Lord of hosts, if thou, carrying the torch, will walk in my ways... And if thou wilt keep my charge, then thou shalt judge my house. And thou shalt keep my courts. And I will give thee a place. Look at somebody and say a place. A place to walk among these that stand by. What did he tell Moses? I'm going to put you in a place where nobody else has wanted to get into. I'm going to put you in a place where nobody else has had asked, can I see your glory? I'm going to put you in a place, Moses, that you're going to see my hinder part. There's others that are with you, Joshua and Caleb and, and all the others in the church, but they've never asked to be put in this place. And he's telling Joshua, Zechariah, is, I'm going to put you in a place that you're going to walk in the midst of this generation that I have chosen to you because you are a peculiar people, a chosen generation. You're not like everybody else. You're chosen. You've been through the fire. You've been the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. You've been the Daniel in the lion's den. You've been the, the one that the fire was heated seven times hotter. You've been the one that thought you were going to lose your mind. You've been the one that thought you were Job in the midst of Job's tribulation. You thought you were Job and you were like Job and everything around you seemed like you were losing. But oh, church, out of the fire I'm going to pluck you. Out of the situation that you're going through, out of the things that you look like there is no end, I'm going to bring you out of it. I'm going to put a new garment on you. I'm going to raise you up and I'm going to use you for my glory. Brand plucked out of the fire. Hear, O Joshua, the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wonders. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. God's prophesying to the church. I've seen your afflictions. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, I bottled up your tears. That every tear that you've shed has been put in a bottle. And those tears that will be turned around and be turned back to you in blessings because weeping is but for a season. But the Bible said, joy cometh in the morning. You may have to go through seasons of fiery darts. You may have to go through a season of a fiery trial. You may have to go through a season that Satan withstands you. And you know the will of God, but it just seems like you can't get in it. You know what God has for you, but you just can't seem to put your foot in the plane. You just can't seem to get in that destination. Because Satan is resisting you. He's doing everything. He can't fight against you because he just wants to do you like he did Ezra and Nehemiah on the wall. 
He wants to frustrate you to the point that you say, I give up. I wave the flag. I'm tired of building a wall that it seems like I can never get finished. I'm tired of preaching a message that seems like nobody hears. I'm tired of crying aloud and sparing not and seeing nothing changed. Hello. Hear ye, O Israel, the word of the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the word of the Lord. I'm going to pluck you out of the fire. You've been in the fire. You've been heated seven times harder. You've gone through things that nobody could have imagined. You fought back the tears when you felt like you were having a nervous breakdown. You fought back the, the, the things in your life that it felt like you were going to fall apart. God's saying to you tonight, Oh, Jerusalem, I'm plucking you out of this fire. I'm going to bring you out of this. I'm going to bring you through this. I'm going to show you, as he said in Zerubbabel, Zechariah 4 and 6, that this is not by your power and not by your might. Zechariah 4 and 6, he, he starts speaking to, to Zerubbabel, to, to Joshua, to prophesy to him. And he said, you know, there's a mountain in front of you. And then there's a hill in front of you. There's some things that you're called to do that looks like they're bigger than you're able to get there too. Thirteen years ago, if I, you had asked me, would I stand with the opportunities that I stand with tonight, I would have laughed at you. I would have had to have been like Sarah when the angel of the Lord spoke to Abraham and said, Abraham, in your old age you shall bear a son and you shall have a son that shall carry on for generations to come. I would have to be honest with you tonight. If you had told me 13 years ago that we would be going through the doors that God is opening to this ministry today, I would have probably said, yeah. And in the back of my mind, I would have been Sarah. I would have had to laugh and said, how is God going to do that? But he's doing it. He's doing it. And even though Satan has resisted us on many sides, even though Satan has resisted us many times as we have prepared to move forward in the anointing, as we have prepared to even build this building, as we prepare now even to go into Africa and India and around the world with ministries, helping them build the kingdom of God. Satan stands on our right side and resists us and said, you're not going to do that. You're not going to ever be in Africa. Because I'm going to make sure I fight against you. I'm going to make sure I do everything I can to discourage you. I'm going to make sure that you don't have enough money. I'm going to make sure that you don't have enough ability. And in Zechariah 4 and 6, sister, and yeah, God speaks to Zerubbabel, speaks to Joshua, excuse me, and says, Joshua, this battle is not by your power. This battle is not by your mind. This battle is by thus saith the Lord God. Doesn't matter if I got enough money or not. When God's time it comes, Sister Nita, God will send me the money. Doesn't matter if I got the 747 to fly in yet. Sister Brenda Thomas prophesied that we would have one day a 747 flying in it for the kingdom of God. You say, Pastor, you're crazy. Honey, I'll take anything God wants to prophesy to me. I believe the Lord. I, I agree with the Holy Ghost like Sister Tammy says. If he wants to give it to me, I'll use it for his kingdom. Do you hear me? And he resists Joshua as he's doing the work of God. And God looks at Joshua and says, what you're about to do, it's not going to be in your strength. Where you're about to go, it's not going to be by your power. The doors that I'm getting ready to open, you don't have the ability to open those doors. Six years ago, I was over in the old church, Sister Anita. I had just came into this church, been a few years, and I was praying to God. And I said, God, I said, Lord, 
If you don't open the doors, God, nothing's going to happen to this ministry. I didn't know Apostle Curtis more then. I didn't know Sister Claire Washington then. I didn't know Brother Tim. I didn't know Brother, Brother Staten. I didn't know some of these others that we know now today. And I was over there, and I can tell you the spot I was at. I was on the platform at the old, in the building the way it is now, and I was on my face, and I was praying to God, and my phone ran. And it was Sister Anita Carnes from Dalton, Georgia. The first time she called me, she called to invite me to come to Georgia. The second time she called to invite me, it wasn't to come to, to be there. They wanted me to come and preach there. Honey, you have to see, this man didn't know me from nobody but meeting me in a church service one night. And me inviting him to come to our church, let alone me come to his church in Dalton, Georgia. I didn't have the strength to open that door, Sister Carol. All I could do is trust in the Lord that know that God would open a door that no man could shut. This past year in Dalton, Georgia, with the way the service worked and things fell, he asked me to come back next year and preach Saturday and Sunday night. Saturday and Sunday both. And I told him, I said, we'll pray about it, brother. We'll pray about it. He said, oh, I want you to come. Why? It wasn't because of me. Because I'm just a man. But it was because of the favor of God that God has given this ministry to go through those doors. Even into other cities like Fort Payne, Alabama, Tennessee, North Carolina, why? Why are you saying all this here? What I'm telling you tonight, God is saying, I'm plucking you out of the fire. You've been through some fiery places, but I'm getting ready to pluck you out, and I'm getting ready to dress you and clothe you, and I'm getting ready to show you that the battle that is going on, that it's not your battle, but it's the Lord's. He said, you have a great mountain before you. Have you ever looked at a mountain? Thirteen years ago when I looked at where I wanted to go in God, I said, Lord, I know where I want to go, but I don't have the money. I don't even have nobody to go with me, God. To God, let us few people start coming to my house at a prayer meeting. And look where God's tucking us. As you become that branch plucked out of the fire, God's clothing you and He's taking you to mountains. He's taking you to situations that there's nothing that you can do. Because he wants to show you on another level of God. That this battle is not by your strength. It isn't by who you may know in town. It isn't by whose family you may be birthed into. That the battle that you're facing right now is only going to be done by the power of Almighty God. He tells Joshua and Zechariah 4 and 6 that it's not by your power and it's not by your mountain and it's not by your might but it's by His Spirit, saith the Lord God. And he's, he begins to prophesy to Joshua and to the nation of Israel and to Jerusalem. He says, I've caused you to come to this place. I allowed Satan to rebuke you. I allowed him to resist you. So I could show you my glory. So I could show you that this is not something you can do. But it's something that I have to do in your life. That it's an area in your life that you can't get through without the Lord doing it for you. Have you ever had a trial? That you, you run every means or measure that you know to, to try to solve it. And there was no solving. Have you ever had a, a storm that you were like the children of God that were on that boat with Jesus? That Brother Ricky, we got every pail bucket we could get. And we tried to throw out every bit of water, every bit of the things in life we could to throw out. We tried to throw it out. And it still kept filling up the boat. Because you know why? The level that God's taken the church into, that it's not by power 
and it's not by might, but it's only by what the Spirit of God has spoken in this day and hour. And as He brings you to mountains, and He is going to bring the church, He has brought the church to mountains that you can't climb over, mountains that you can't ignore, Sister Tammy, Mountains in your life that you can't get around because you try to run around it and you just keep going and going and going. You can't never get around it. And you try to crawl under it. You try to dig under it. I'll dig my way through under this thing that I can get through it and it's still there. Why? Because he has on purpose to allow Satan to resist you. He's on purpose to allow Satan to stand in your way to see how you would stand. To see how you would walk. It's to see how you would make your mind up that you're going to be the man of God. That you're going to be the woman of God. That you're going to be the church of God. That he will look at it and say, I'm going to pluck you out of the fire. I'm going to change your raiment. I'm going to give you a brand new change of garment. I'm going to allow you to come to those mountains and those mountains that stood in your way. You're going to stand still and know that I am God. You're going to stand still and know that you have nothing that you can do about it. But if God doesn't come to your rescue, you heard that old song, haven't you? If God don't come to my rescue, I'll die lost. If God don't come on the scene, I'm not going to make it. If God doesn't come to my rescue... I'll never come through this. Joshua and Zechariah, he's prophesying to him because there's mountains. And he's allowed Satan on purpose to stand there. He's allowed him to resist Joshua. He's allowed him to stand there that he wants him to know that this battle, Sister Tammy, isn't a battle that you can do in flesh. Brother Daniel, Preach with me, brother. It's not by flesh. I can't get even with them. I don't want to run over the dog. I like to find if out they got a cat. I don't hang it on their mailbox. Hello. Don't tell me there's not times that somebody, the devil used somebody to resist you, come against you, that you didn't feel like you wanted to get even with. If you ain't got that, show me your wings. And I don't think there's no wings here tonight. I believe you all got shoulder blades. Amen. Why? Because we all have been there, Sister Mandy, where God allows somebody, allows Satan to resist us. And we were trying to do everything we could, Sister Carol, to do the will of God, the plan of God, or what God wanted. And it seemed like that person was in my way. Can I run over them, God? Will you give me grace to run over them? Hello? I've had a few people I had to pray about. Hello? If you don't, you, you've got a lot further than most church people have. Including preachers. But listen to me. He resisted because God wanted to make this a situation. And he said, And in that day, said the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. I'm going to bring you to a place that you're flowing together. Brother Daniel, the church is coming up to a new level. God is plucking her out of the fire. Yes, she's gone through the fire. Yes, she's gone through resistance. Yes, she's had that ugly devil stand there and say, you're not going to preach. You're not going to do this. You're not going to do that. And they prophesied, and God said, yes, you can. And we walked around and said, God, where's my prophecy? God, where's the word that you spoke to me? And all the time, Satan was resisting us, trying his best to get us to say it'll never happen. But honey, I'm here to tell you tonight the word of the Lord that's coming forth in this hour that God is plucking the church out of the fire. He's getting ready to change and put a new garment on it. He's getting ready to put some praise back in. He's getting ready to put some worship back in. He's getting ready to raise up a standard, Brother Daniel. He's getting ready to set them in the ways of God. He's getting ready to put them in the court that they're going to begin to be judges and they're going to begin to do the thing that God has called them to do in this earth. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Fourth chapter. Let me read a little bit out of it for you. And the angel talked with me again. And he woke me. How many times has God got to wake us up? How many times has God got to come along and say, I know Satan's standing resisting you, but wake up. Don't you understand the time and the hour? Don't you understand what God's purpose and God's plan is? Don't you understand? And he said unto me, Seeth thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon it, and seven lamps thereof, seven pipes in the seven lamps, which are upon the top of thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side and the other upon the left side. And so I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these things, my Lord? Listen to me. And then the angel talked with me and answered and said, Knoweth thou not what these be? And I said, Nay, my Lord. And then he answered and said unto me, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. This says, Not by power, might, nor by power, but by the Spirit. By the Spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. And who are, O great mountains, before Zerubbabel? And they shall become plains. I'm here to prophesy to the church. There's been some mountains in the past that have stood in your way, but God's getting ready to bring them down, Brother Daniel. There's been some mountains that have stopped you. There's been some mountains that have stood in your way, but God is here to prophesy to the church. There's some mountains getting ready to be brought down, and there's some cities, Sister Anna, that when you spoke the other night, I heard it in the Holy Ghost. I've given you the city. There's some cities that God's getting ready to give to men of God that as they go in and prophesy, as the Lord commands them, He's going to say to them, I give you the city. The mountain that stood before you before will stand no longer. The situation that was there before will no longer hold you back. There's a remnant seed, Sister Andrew, that are coming into this a foreknowledge of God. Funnel knowledge, if you understand what I'm talking about. Of God, that as they begin to prophesy, God begin to speak to Zerubbabel. And he begins to tell him, there's been mountains that have stood before you, but those mountains are getting ready to lay down. There have obstacles that have been in front of the church, but those obstacles are getting ready to be moved out because I have plucked you out of the fire. I have brought you through the fire. I have brought you through the test. I have brought you through the trial. I have brought you through this thing for a purpose in life, Brother Ricky Gilbert. For a purpose. For a thing. That I have called you to do. For a meaning. That I have spoken for you to perform. That mountain. That obstacle. That is standing before the church. Is getting ready to lay down. When they came to the walls of Jericho. The sister Andrew preached about Thursday night. Amen. And they blew the trumpet. Like sister Carol did. When they commanded God said. You do what I say. And I'm going to give you a place to walk in. I want you to know something tonight. There is a high place that you can walk in tonight. There is a place that God has set just for you to walk in tonight. There are steps that are ordered of the Lord tonight for the church to walk in tonight. I'm talking to some eagles tonight that are going to soar in a higher dimension of the kingdom of God. They're going to walk in places that nothing can touch them. Nothing can come about them. Though the enemy encamped against them, he cannot touch them. Because of where they stand in God. Do you hear me tonight? I plucked them out of the fire. I brought them through the test of life. I brought them just like Job. Where he lost everything. And he went to the bottom. And at the bottom he said, Though God slayed me, would I yet trust him? 
Though God may decide to take me out of here, I'm going to trust in the Lord. Though God may cause me to die right here in this trial, I'm going to trust in God. And because he said those words, Sister Carol, God looked into the scene and said, Hold it a minute, Job. I'm going to give you a place to walk. I'm going to give you a testimony to carry. I'm going to give you something that you can have resisted the devil. Because see, the devil all the time was trying to get Job to curse God. Hello? All the time, the test was going on. Satan said, why don't you blame God for this thing? Job, why don't you blame God because your kids are dead? Job, why don't you blame God because you lost your job after 30 years? Why don't you blame God because your wife is now telling you curse God and die? Hello? He was resisting Satan because all the time Satan was wanting one thing in Job's life, his soul. He wasn't caring about his job. He wasn't caring about his kids. He wasn't caring about his income. All he wanted Job to do is said, I'm going to curse God for what I'm going through. Job did the day he was born, but he never cursed God. He said, it was better that I had never been born but he never cursed God. He never charged God foolishly. He never stood back and shook his hand at God and said, God, why did you give me these children and now let them die? He never stood back and said, God, why did you bless me with all the men servants, the women servants, the land, the home, the cattle, the sheep, to take it away from me. Why did you bless me with good health? And now I'm sitting here with a piece of glass trying to find a way to get some relief. My health is deteriorated to where I can't even feel peace. Anybody hearing me tonight? Job could have stood there and shook his hand at God. See, that's why Satan was doing everything he could to resist Job, to get Job to curse God, to turn on God, and to blame God for where he was at. And all the time, he was a brand in the fire. And God was going to pluck him out of that fire. And God was going to change his raiment. And God was going to bless him double for his trouble. Do you hear me? But it took walking through time that when Satan even got the closest thing to him. Honey, closest thing that will bother you to be upset is your wife. If Sister Tammy's upset, I'm upset. Hello. Sister Tammy's rebuking the devil. Listen to me. Why? He had six children with her. They were a family. She was probably the closest thing to him. The Satan went over and got a hold of him and said, Come here. Too bad Bridget ain't out here. I'd use her. And said, Let me talk to you, woman. Hmm, I'm looking for somebody to pick on. Brother Junior, Sister Connie, come here a minute. You two on the back. I'll let the devil talk to you a minute. Hello? Brother Junior is going to be a, a Job a moment. Sister Connie's going to be his wife. Come over here and sit down, Job. Connie, you stay right there just for a minute. Now you come over here where I'm at. Come here, devil. Help me out, guys. You get, you're supposed to get behind her, not in front of her. Come here, Connie. Because you see, when Satan is resisting you, 
He's going to find whatever it is that's closest to you. And most of the time, it should be anyway, your wife. And he come up to Sister Connie and said, why don't you tell Junior, where's God in all what we're going through? You know he's prayed, but where's he at? Why ain't he listening? He's supposed to be talking to her, not me. <laughs> Devil's let me do the talking. He's standing here listening. I'm just trying to give a, a little implantation of some thoughts. Talk to her. <laughs> <laughs> But you see, all the time, Satan, Job was resisting Satan. He was a brand that was in the fire. God, I'm standing, but Lord, what am I standing for? And here's Job's wife. Come with me, Sister Connie. And she walks over to her husband and says, Where's God? Why don't you curse him? Our kids are gone. Don't you understand? My babies are not here. The money that we had is gone. Something happened. Our cattle is gone. Our income is gone. I'm going to live in a little bit to get the point. <laughs> Because you see, that's the closest to you. Because he didn't try the kiss and he kept on. He tries the friends and they don't move him. Now his wife says, why don't you just curse God and die? Why don't we just curse God? Why don't we just get it over with? What has God done for us? Our kids are gone. Our income's gone. Our family's falling apart. Our life is in the shambles. Hello? A brand that's in the fire? A brand, my babies, my babies, I had to bear them. Where's God? All the time, Satan is over here feeding into her mind those thoughts. I've had to help you out, devil. Feeding in her mind those thoughts. And all the time, Job is at brand. And he's having to fight back. Hello? I told somebody last year, you want to be a brand in the fire? I had to do two funerals last year in 2009 when my wife was going through cancer. Standing at the, at the casket, Brother Junior, looking at Sister Bennett, looking at Sister Bernard, Bernard and some others having to minister at their funeral all the time. Satan's standing, resisting me and saying, your wife is going to be the next one laying in that casket. Don't you know that cancer is going to kill her? Don't you know that all that you've done, everything that she's gone through, she's going to be next? Hello? Resisting a brand plucked out of the fire? Because when you come out of that fire, now you can back up, devil. Get out of the picture. You can go on, Sister Connie. Find a seat over here behind Sister Tammy. I know you want to get off the front. But listen to me. All of these thoughts going through. It's fire. Are they right? Is my wife going to be next? I remember standing at one particular funeral. Sister Anita, and it was everything I could do looking in the family's faces, seeing tears run down their face, and feel the attack of the enemy on the inside of me. A brand in the fire. Why? Because all the time the devil's telling me, 
She's next. What are you going to do? How are you going to raise your kids? How are you going to pastor a church? Are you going to walk away from it all? Hello. If she dies, are you going to throw your hands up and walk away? Why? Where was God at? All the time she was going through that, those thoughts were being fed to my mind by Satan. And I was a brand in the fire. Having to fight them back and saying, I trust God. I trust in the Lord. I had to lay Sister Tammy on the altar and say, God, if she lives, it's to God's glory. But if you take her, it's still going to be God's glory. I believe, Brother Junior, how I handled it determined my outcome. Hello? Hello? How I dealt with the devil. How I resisted his temptation, Sister Tammy, to say, if she dies, I'm going to quit preaching. The preachers that have. Something happened to their family they... They couldn't understand why God allowed it to happen and they hung the harps and the willow tree and quit serving God and said, God, I give up. Their faith, their faith becomes shipwrecked in the trial of their life. Brother Junior, a brand plucked out of the fire. Some of you are I'm talking to because you, you've been down that same road in some of the very same things and you've had that Satan resist you. You've had him come and talk to you. You've had him do everything he could. Say, why don't you give up? It's not going to make him. Satan, after all of that, he looks at him. He said, i got to trust God. I don't know what God's going to do in my trial. I don't know. It's Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, I don't know what God's going to do, but I'm in throat in this fiery furnace. The devil's tried to bound my praise. He's tried to tie my hands. He's tried to break my worship. But all I know is, is I'm going to trust in the Lord, and I'm going to worship God. And because when they went in, they didn't go in griping. They didn't go in complaining. They didn't go in blaming God. God, why did you let me get put in the fire? God, why did I lose the promotion? God, why did my children die? Why was my marriage the one that fell apart? God, why did my husband this, my wife that? Why did God this happen here and that happen there? They went in saying, God, I'm going to trust in you. Some trust in horses and some trust in chariots, the scripture says. But I will trust in the name of the Lord today because I'm a brand that's been plucked out of the fire. I understand what it is. And as Job stood, brother, as he stood in that fire, as he stood in that test, God changed his raiment. God put a brand new raiment on it and he brought him out of that fire. And the Bible said he blessed him. What did he do to Joshua Zerubbabel? He said, the mountain that's before you, it's going to lay down. He said, because I am who I am, that the situations that have stood in front of you, I'm going to cause them to lay down. I'm going to show you that I am God. I am going to show you that I am Emmanuel. I'm going to show you I am the Alpha and the Omega. I'm going to show you that you are my servant. You are my chosen generation. You are my man on test. A brand plucked out of the fire. As he changes his garment, he begins to let him see the things in chapter 4. The two angels that stand beside, I believe all those were fighting for Joshua. I believe that tonight God's fighting for you. He's fighting for every one of you tonight. You may not see what I'm preaching, but it's there. You may not understand what God's saying, but it's there tonight that I'm going to pluck you out of the fire. And I'm going to clothe you. And I'm going to cause you to be lifted up and promoted because you have stood the fire. You have stood and resisted the devil. You have stood when you could have gave up. You have stood when you could have thrown the towel in. You have stood when everything was against you. You have stood when everything, everybody blamed you. You have stood when everything looked like it was going your, against you. 
You have stood for God. And because you stood for God, God will stand for you tonight. Stand your feet tonight, if you will, with me. This house. Tonight, okay, on the Torch Ministries, you are the brand of God that's been plucked through the fire. We went through a lot of things in 13 years that we started over just a few weeks ago. But God spoke to me on home and come day this year. And he said, this year is not going to be like any other year that you've had. Because I'm charting a new course. I'm taking you down a new road. And I'm going to show you my glory. And I'm going to show you my presence. And I believe that as we are getting ready to cross this week into camp meeting with the gathering of the eagles. I believe that we're going to see confirmations after confirmations. I've not talked to them. I've not called them. I've not spoke to them since I left Georgia. Sister Clara, I haven't spoke with for months. But I believe that as they come in this next week, they're going to be coming in with manna. They're going to come in with live meat. They're going to come in with word just like God's preached tonight that's going to give you strength to know that you are being plucked out of the fire. You may have been in the fire. You may have been in the fire. I'm saying past tense. I'm saying past tense. But tonight, God said, tell you, I'm going to pluck you out of that fire and I'm going to change your raiment and I'm going to cause the mountain that was before you to lay down and not be able to stand before you. Brother Robert, Josh, get us a song back there, son. And I want you tonight come.